Vanessa, welcome, and thank you so much for joining me today on the Best of Women's Fiction podcast. Ashley, thank you for having me. We have so much to discuss. I know you have a historical mystery coming out called Murder in Drury Lane. But first, I want to discuss your more women's fiction-focused historical novel, Queen of Exile. For those listeners who may not have read it yet, will you share your synopsis? Yes. Queen Marie-Louise Covera Christophe is a woman we should actually know. She's a woman of humble beginnings who literally becomes a queen one day when her husband decides he's forming a kingdom. She's a dutiful woman. She was a hotelier's daughter. And she's put on the world stage in a position that she never dreamed she was going to be in. But she rises to the occasion. Queen of Exiles takes you on her journey, how she helped her husband form the kingdom, the heights of the kingdom of Haiti. Many people don't realize that there was a kingdom at one point in Haiti after the revolution when the country splits. And she and her husband are progressive. They're bringing vaccinations to the country. They're, they're doing things to champion women's rights. But there's always this constant conflict of how do we fit into a European-centric world when we are of African descent, when we are Haitian, and yet still never turn our backs on our history and what causes to be liberated. But the kingdom doesn't last. She is forced into exile, and she has to basically live the next part of her journey. Who is she then? She's an exiled queen. Will she be accepted? And she has two daughters that she has to protect. So you're going to see a mother bear, a queen, and a woman who always remembered her worth, no matter what station she found in life. Once again, Queen Louise is someone we should know, someone we should admire. She should be one of our heroes. I love to hear about that initial spark of inspiration that leads an author to spend the time, energy, sweat, and tears to produce a novel. Do you remember the first time you heard about her and what it was in particular about her story that made you think that's the story I want to tell? Yes. And the funny thing is when I first found her, I didn't think that was the story I wanted to tell. I had uh, been doing research for my second historical fiction, which was Sister Mother Warrior. Georgia's literary fiction of the year, by the way. And I, as one does, you want to get the, the closest source you can to who these people were doing the liberation. Thomas Matteo is a historian who actually published 10 years after the revolution. But he, he's actually interviewed the principals and he is a little, little, little couple sentences about a woman named uh, Louis, Mary Louise She's the wife of uh, Henri Christophe, who ends up being the second in the command of Jean-Jacques Deslines. I do more research and I find out that this wife of becomes the, the wife of a general, the wife of the second in command. And now she becomes uh, the wife of the president point of Haiti. And then she becomes the first and only queen of Haiti. I'm like, wow, what does that look like? Yeah. And then to find how she changes on the world stage and how she still is a queen, even though she's in exile, even though she's black in a European setting. She's a queen, she's respected, just to know that story. And I take the readers into the ballrooms, into the courts, so that you can see everything this woman did, ex how she existed, how she made her way. She's a phenomenal woman. And so I'm glad that first impressions are not lasting ones. <laughs> exactly, and I'm glad that you took that tiny little blip of a sentence and decided to look in further. Exactly. Unfortunately for women's history, that's what happens. We always hear about the men, but we know in this world, there are women that are supporting them, that are on the battlefields, in the hospitals, in the teaching rooms. There are women everywhere that are making a difference. And so I'm so happy to have found this woman and to bring her back to us because she was great. Absolutely. Taking a step back for a moment, I'm curious about your journey to becoming an author. I've interviewed a lot of authors through the podcast and my blog, and I've learned that the path to becoming an author is rarely a direct one. But with your background, which includes a doctorate in mechanical engineering and an MS in industrial engineering, you may win the award for biggest career shift. <laughs> so how did you go from engineering to publishing dozens of novels? It's a journey fraught with love and, and crazy and fun. But I have to blame my mother. She's the problem here. <laughs> when I was in school, I'm classic nerds nerd. So I, I look cool now. Right. But I was a nerd's nerd with pocket protectors and everything. And I was good at two things. I was good at math. I was good at writing. 
and also science. I'm the kid that won the gold medallions at science camp and things like that. But we get to this pivotal point. I've won the governor's essay contest and these types of things. And it's career time. And my mom looks at me and she's like, I know you like to write, but baby, you always need to be able to pay your bills. Mm -hmm. And at the time, having a full-time career, being an author as a woman is lightning striking, right? So I went the engineering route and she was absolutely right. It definitely pays the bills. I, I've been on some of the greatest projects. One of my favorites is when I was working with General Motors and I happened to help fix a high pressure turbine pump. So the reason why your Cadillacs, if you drive a Cadillac, is quiet. Oh my gosh. What so that's one of my little claim to faves. But I also would get the, the bosses who were like, Vanessa, this report on die cast manufacturing is really too interesting. <laughs> Of course. You tone it down a little bit. Tone it down. <laughs> when you have a gift, when you have a passion, it, you make it makes room for itself or you make room for it. I prefer to be in a driving seat. There was a point in my life where I had to sit down and do absolutely nothing for five months. It was a difficult pregnancy. Doctor said, we want this to end well. Mm. So you sit down and I'm like, are you crazy? I can't sit down. And my husband lovingly, or actually on eggshells, goes up and finds boxes of some of my earlier manuscripts from high school. And I'm like, I know more. I can write this better. No, I really didn't know more. So it took a long time. <laughs> but here we are. I'm excited and loving every moment. Interesting. So it was a pregnancy that got you back into pursuing writing. Absolutely. So it's my mom and Ellen's fault. There we yeah. go. <laughs> Drawing from that experience and the path that led you where you are now, what one piece of advice do you think is most important for writers? Two things. You never give up. Um, and two, knowing that your voice is important, your perspective is different from everybody else's. And even, even if it doesn't look the same or doesn't feel the same as what you've seen someone else do, your voice is unique. So keep going. And sooner or later, everything lines up and you, you get to push through. I love that piece of advice because it's really nothing you have to do or talent you have to possess. It's just showing up. Showing up. And everyone showing can up. show up. Yeah. A lot of people talk about writing a book. Very few people actually sit down and do the work to write a book. Absolutely. Lainey and I, and of course, our Best of Women's Fiction podcast listeners too, are always looking for new books to add to our TBR piles. I'd love to hear about your reading world. What are you reading right now that you recommend? Beatrice Williams, The Beach at Summerlee is beautiful. Dineas Bryce has a new one that actually releases on October 3rd. That is The Other Princess. That is exciting. I have read so many arcs of books that are coming out in 24 and 25. There's one on Hattie McDaniel, Rashonda Tate's Billingsley's phenomenal. Michelle Linda Rice is coming out with the Women's Book Club or the Book Club Hours. There are just so many wonderful things. Vanessa Miller is coming out with The American Queen. Bitter and Sweet by Rhonda McKnight. I love when we're living at a time where all voices matter and all experiences are coming to the forefront and, and available for us to purchase. Of course, I don't want to forget to tell our listeners about your upcoming historical mystery. What would you like to tell us about that novel? If you love historical mystery and you really want to sink into a time period, the, the book's uh, Lady Worthing is set in 1806. So think a, a woman of privilege who wants to use that privilege to restart the abolition movement because literally, when Haiti becomes free in 1804, there's a panic that's set out in the world and all the abolition movements really stop. So William Wilberforce and everybody's sitting on the sidelines. And so Lady Worthing, she's a woman of color. She's of mixed heritage. She wants to get the world started again, but people keep dying around her. <laughs> and in uh, Murder in Drury Lane. That's funny. But... <laughs> no, I know. In Murder in Drury Lane, we're going to go to the actual Drury Lane Theater. There are a lot of things happening, but just to say no good deed goes unpunished. Mm -hmm. What if the man who you believe is responsible for killing people is the vote that's necessary to push the abolition bill through Parliament? That's good. That's a great cliffhanger for us. 
Finally, I want to share how people can find you. What is your website and where do you hang out on social media? VanessaRiley.com is the mothership. It's got all the social medias because I really love Instagram. I'm getting more and more active on TikTok. X or Twitter or whatever the heck it's called. Oh, yeah. I'm there. <laughs> and of course, Facebook. But you find everything. My newsletter, there's tidbits, there's recipes, there's what's happening in the world of my crazy world of writing. Everything on my newsletter. That's the true center of everything. So make sure you go there. I do want to second that because I did a deep dive in your website in order to prepare for this interview. And there you've published more books than I realized. Like it just, the list just kept keep going. <laughs> I've had fun. And until the last two years, it, it was two jobs. So I would be that wife. I'd have a regular job during the day, I'd come home, be the wife and mommy. And then I'd put them suckers to bed by 10. And from 10 to two, I was writing. You find the time to do the things that you're passionate about. And I love writing. You'll see my historical world. Everything is historical. Historical mystery, historical romance, and historical fiction. Which is my love. I love the historical, which is why I get to interview you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Before we wrap up, is there anything else you wanted to talk about that we haven't covered? I think we're pretty exhaustive. Just if the reader is looking to really sink in to these worlds, my historicals in all forms do that. I take you there. I let you inhabit the conversations, the ballrooms, the mystery, the drama, and the tomfoolery, because there's lots of tomfoolery mm -hmm. in history. Vanessa, thank you again for joining us on the podcast and sharing your books and your experience as an author with our listeners. Loved chatting with you. And I have to say again, I just love the suit that you're wearing. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you so much. I, I love it. This is going to be a great day and you have a great day and thank you.